Hey guys, it's Dustin with Mojo Creator, and I've been pretty busy lately. As you can see, I'm growing this master stash right here. No, I'm just uh, kidding. We've been working a lot with uh, the most recent Google algorithm updates. Uh, most of y'all know Google just got done releasing uh, their Panda update and then followed by the Penguin update, so it created a lot of confusion. There's a lot of uh, false information going around the web right now, and a lot of people that are kind of in fear and panic mode. So I kind of wanted to dispel some of the rumors and give you some of the... Uh, the action on what's been going on with Google, talk about some of the Google basics, how search engines function, and uh, let you know what this, these algorithm updates mean to you as site owners. So let's get into it. So web, web property owners are really at the mercy of the search engines. You know, you could hand out business cards with your web page on it, but, but that's not really a good way to get your information out there. You know, we need the search engines because they're a very effective way of classifying what websites are about and leading the proper people to the websites they're looking for. Uh, as you can see from this graph, Google is the big boy. They've got about 65% market share. Uh, this is as of, I believe, March or April 2012, so it's pretty recent. Uh, the, the other two, the other two you know, major minor type guys are Yahoo, who's been around quite a while, they're at 16%, and Bing, who's Microsoft's up and coming search engine, and they got about 14%. Uh, recently, Yahoo's uh, you know started to try to get out of the search engine game. And I believe at this point they're just returning Bing results, and they're no longer doing any indexing on their. Uh... But the steadfast rule that the majority of us use is to follow Google's recommendations and guidelines, since they are the authority at this point. You know that might change in a couple of years, but as the authority at this point, they really give us good guidelines to follow as to what their system rewards and what it punishes. So that's kind of what we need to understand when looking at Google algorithm updates. The the way Google learns about the web and finds out what websites are out there and where they are and who they link to is through this process of indexing and they have these little bots that we call web spiders and web spiders crawl around the internet looking for information. They, they uh, they judge a lot of different factors. They, they look for keyword content, the HTML, how the site is structured. Uh, they look for links, they, and they, they, they uh, judge you based on authority. Or in other words, how much they can trust you. With our little diagram here, we see the, uh, the web spider, and basically he's going to the homepage or the root URL of the domain, you know, and he'll go in there, and first of all, he'll read these meta tags. So they read the meta tags, they read the keywords, they scan through links and follow uh, navigation to, to basically make a roadmap uh, for the search engine about what's out there. And it compiles a massive list of, of your entire site, which we call indexing. Uh, these spiders will you know, come back on a daily basis once you've been indexed to try to figure out what's new and what's changed and what sort of information you have to offer their users because in the, the end result the search engine is there to provide the best answer to a user's query so th this is their method of doing that you know but once they've assembled all this information they have to have a way of discerning which ones are the important authority sites with high reputation that are trustworthy and who's out there just promoting weak content uh, for the just the purpose of trying to get people to come to their site but this is basically the process. The spider crawls, crawls the website, he comes back with information about what is in the website, and then they, they load it into a, a system index, which is basically where the Google algorithm comes into play. Once they've gotten all the information collected, they really have to figure out a way to weigh it to tell the, the searcher which is the most important information. And when you've got a search that returns 12 million websites, in a matter of seconds, you know, this is highly important. So in basic terms, the algorithm gives Google the ability to distinguish quality on the internet. You know, it has all this information, has to figure out what to do with it, who to trust, and how to rank this information. Uh, the algorithm does this for them, but the algorithm's not perfect, and it's constantly being updated to try to you know, weed out new practices which can be considered against Google's guidelines. Everyone's always trying to game the system. People want to get an unfair advantage, and that's the algorithm's job is to make sure it's on a level playing field, rewarding the people that really need to be rewarded, producing the quality content, and who are the authorities out there on the Internet. 
So in an effort to uh, provide the best experience for Google's users, they uh, periodically will update their algorithm to change the factors which they weigh as important uh, when deciding which pages rank at the top of a Google search. So when these updates occur, Google won't give you specifics, but they'll give you some broad factors that they're uh, changing the weight of or filtering or looking at when the update occurs. Uh, recently, there's been some a few of the, the more prominent updates in recent past. Uh, the Vince update from 2009 that looked at trust and page rank, and then in 2010 the Mayday update that targeted long tail search referrals. And then that brings us to Panda. Although we've been hearing a lot about Panda in the news lately, it was originally rolled out back in February of 2011. Uh, Panda targeted the content farms that were making low quality, shallow content uh, that Google looked at as, as uh, spam. But Panda wasn't simply an update, Panda's more of a filter which uh, Google runs uh, what seems to be every four to six weeks to try to pick up sites that it believes to be low quality pages. Um, when they find one of these low quality pages, they actually flag it and then it doesn't de-index your whole site or remove it, but it just puts a penalty on it which causes you to drop from the top of the rankings. And so here again, what they're looking for is, is websites that have uh, stolen content from other sources, plagiarized, borrowed, repetitive content that's not really adding anything new or giving any added value to Google's users. So this graph gives a really good uh, visual explanation about how Panda affected websites over the whole of 2011. You can see right here in the green box that it was originally rolled out February 23rd and it was a big crackdown on these content farms and uh, websites with low quality content. A after the February 1st release, basically every four to six weeks, uh, once again, it, uh, they did another small minor update. Google's pretty vague with the actual terms of what each update includes but you'll see a little bit of fluctuation and some Google dancing that goes on you know after each one is rolled out and Google will uh, let you know which version that they've put to use. So on April 24th of 2012 the most recent version of Panda version 3.5 went live. Uh, this created a lot of confusion because the Penguin update that everyone had been hyped on had occurred uh, on the 19th which is only five days earlier. Uh, these two updates occurring at the same time caused a lot of confusion and people who lost rankings were unsure of why they had lost rankings. So in the next video we're going to talk a little bit more about Panda and the P and Penguin update and differentiate between the two.